What if the sky turned against us? Not with fire, not with storms, but with light. The most beautiful light you've ever seen, and the last one your civilization ever will. This is not science fiction. This is a solar storm, and it has happened before. It will happen again. Before we dive into solar doom, let's talk about the glow before the storm. What exactly is an aurora? It begins on the surface of the sun, a place where magnetic fields twist and snap like cosmic whips, unleashing vast eruptions called solar flares and coronal mass ejections. These explosions fling charged particles, mainly electrons and protons, into space at millions of kilometers per hour, and some of them are headed straight for us. Now, Earth is protected by an invisible force, the magnetosphere. Think of it as a magnetic bubble surrounding the Earth. It deflects most of the solar wind like a shield, but at the poles, the shield dips inward, like a funnel. Here, those solar particles breach the barrier and collide with atoms in our upper atmosphere, mostly oxygen and nitrogen. The result? Excitation. Those atmospheric atoms absorb the energy, jump to a higher energy state, and then fall back down, releasing light. Green, red, violet, depending on the gas and the altitude. This is an aurora, a photonic battlefield in the sky a visible fingerprint of a solar strike. And the more violent the storm, the brighter the lights. So when you see the Northern Lights dance, know this, you're watching the aftermath of a cosmic collision between Earth and the Sun. But what happens? When the storm doesn't end with beauty, but begins with destruction. September 1st, 1859. British astronomer Richard Carrington notices a flash on the Sun. A sunspot explodes. Hours later, the skies over Cuba and even Hawaii erupt in auroras so bright you could read a newspaper at night. Telegraph lines spark, operators are shocked, and equipment catches fire. And this was 1859. No satellites, no internet, no power grids. Today, we live in a glass house of electronics, and a solar storm like that would throw stones. Big ones. NASA calls it a matter of when, not if. So what would happen if a Carrington-class event struck right now? Within minutes, our satellites fry. GPS gone. Navigation, dead. Minutes later, power grids worldwide overload and collapse. Transformers melt. Entire countries go dark. No phones, no internet, no banking. Hospitals grind to a halt. Air traffic frozen. And the stock market, obliterated. In a hyper-connected world, disconnection is death. Here's how it happens. As the solar plasma hits, it distorts Earth's magnetic field, inducing currents in long conductors, like power lines and pipelines. Those induced currents overload the grid, causing transformers to explode. It's not just lights going out, it's infrastructure collapse. Some regions might be without power for months. Repairing high-voltage transformers takes years, and most are built overseas. Now imagine that at a global scale. That's not a blackout. It's a civilizational trauma. And here's the terrifying truth. In July 2012, a massive solar storm did erupt. The coronal mass ejection was powerful enough to cause global damage. It missed Earth by just nine days. If Earth had been in a slightly different orbital position, we'd be telling a very different story right now. You wouldn't be watching this video because there might not be an internet to watch it on. Some satellites are shielded. Some power grids have protocols, but we are woefully unprepared. A 2013 Lloyds report estimated the damage from a modern solar storm could exceed $2.6 trillion in the first year alone. It would take 10 years or more to recover. It would feel like time travel. Back to a pre-digital age, only without the skills to survive it. Food supply chains collapse, communication fails, economies crumble, and panic spreads faster than light. We stare at the sky in awe, but rarely in fear. The aurora to most is a spectacle, to physicists a side effect of solar aggression, to survivors of the next big one a signal of collapse. Isn't it strange that the same sun that gives us life could end our civilization with a beautiful glowing warning? We spend trillions preparing for war with each other, but nothing preparing for war with the stars. The next Carrington event is coming, and when it does, the first thing you'll see is the most breathtaking aurora ever recorded. The second darkness. This is the mind bender, where beauty is terrifying, and the sky might just be your enemy. Subscribe if you're brave enough to keep asking, what else is waiting up there?